What's going on YouTube? So real quick, I just wanted to show you my settings for the GH5 that I use for music videos as well as for vlogging and for any other type of video settings. So let's go ahead and get into it right now. So the first thing you're gonna do is obviously turn on the camera and you're going to hit the center button right here. And for exposure mode, I do manual. For anamorphic, I keep off. For synchro scan, I keep off. For SS gain operation, I leave on second slash ISO. The wave and vector scope, I actually put it on wave while I'm shooting music videos. And it'll actually give you that screen right there. So when you're shooting, you can calibrate and make sure everything's set correctly. For anamorphic to squeeze display, I keep on off. Vlog L view assist, I put on vlog underscore 709 and I have the LUT monitor display on. For the focus transition, I have focus pool setting set at not set for all of the positions. For the focus transition speed, I keep on manual. For the focus transition record, I keep on off. And for the tr focus transition weight, I keep on off. The 4K live cropping, I keep on off. Now for the record format, I do MOV. You have the option of doing MOV or MP4. I keep it on MOV. Now for the record quality for music videos. When it comes to shooting in 4K, I usually shoot 4K all in 400 megabytes, 24 frames per second. So the reason why I do 4K all in 400, 10 bit instead of 4K, uh, 8 bit or anything like that. With 8 bit, when you're shooting in vlog, you're not going to get as much data. You're not gonna get as much dynamic range. And basically vlog is actually set to edit with 10 bit instead of 8 bit. So when it comes to shooting music videos, you're gonna get better dynamic range and better color correction and color grading possibilities when you shoot in 10 bit. Now you don't have to do 400 megabytes. There are some people that'll go down to 150. There are some people that'll do 100. I choose to do 400 and, and max it out. Now the other main thing that a lot of people want to know is, is do you record in 4K or do you record in true cinema 4K? Now when it comes to shooting music videos, if you're planning on uploading it to YouTube or any kind of web-based format, I would choose 4K. Again, 4K, 400 megabytes. Uh, 10 bit instead of the C4K because the C4K is actually going to be uh, the frame resolution is going to be 4096 by 2160 instead of the 4K setting being the 3840 by 2160. Now, when you put that into your editing software, if you do the Cine 4K, it's actually going to be a different image size and basically a different aspect ratio compared to what YouTube is used to or what any kind of web format is used to, such as, you know, 1920 by 1080. Uh, 3840 by 2160 and so on. So basically when you go to edit that, it's going to be a larger image and it's actually going to be scaled down differently. So again, I would choose if you're planning on uploading this to YouTube or any kind of web-based format, I would choose the 4K 400 all in 24 frames per second. That's gonna be your best uh, color grading and color correction options. I wouldn't do 8-bit when it comes to shooting in 4K. The only time I'm uh, doing 8-bit is when I actually want to shoot slow motion. I'll go all the way down to the 8-bit FHD 100 megabytes, 24 frames per second. I click that and then when you want to go into slow motion, you're going to go back and go to the first menu and you're going to go down to variable frame rate and go to set and this is where you can go from 24 frames to 60 frames, 72 frames, 84 frames, 96 frames, all the way up to 180 frames per second. Now just remember when you're shooting in slow motion, whatever frame rate you choose, you're gonna have to figure out that calculation when you go into your um, editing software. Now the reason you wanna know this percentage for later on is, is basically when you go into your editing software, say for instance, you had your artist do a take where it's half performance, half b-roll so what would happen is is you would tell your artist you know this is going to be a half performance half b-roll basically perform uh, some of the song that you want to see have actual performance and action shots and then for different parts of the song do something that you'd want to see in slow motion without actually mouthing the words so when you take that into your editing software you can play between going you know fast pace action and slowing it down again i wouldn't really do that um past 60 frames per second. When you start getting past 60 frames per second, like say 72, 96, uh, even 180 frames per second, that's gonna be super, super slow-mo. I've never even done 180 frames per second for my slow-mo. The most I'll actually take it to is 72 frames, and, and that's more than slow enough for most of the music videos that I've shot when it comes to B-roll. So again, um, this is how you would set your variable frame rate when you wanna do slow motion. Again, I usually keep it between either 60 or 72 frames. Sometimes I'll go to 96 frames, but like I said, 72 has been more than adequate enough for most of the music videos that I've shot 
um, on the GH5 when it comes to slow motion. Now guys, also too, when I'm recording in the 8-bit 1920 by 1080 for the variable frame rate or for the slow motion. The only time I'm doing that is obviously when I want to be able to have the capability of going past 60 frames per second. The only way you can go past 60 frames per second in slow motion on the GH5 is, is you have to record in 1920 by 1080. The great thing about the GH5 though, with the new upgrades and everything that's going on with the GH5, you can record in slow motion 60 frames per second in 4K, 100 megabytes. It will be in 8-bit, but it is gonna be in 4K and it allows you to go all the way up to 60 frames per second. So you can do slow motion now in 4K on the GH5. However, like I said, if you wanna be able to record slow motion past 60 frames per second, again, from 72 frames all the way up to 180 frames, you have to record in 1920 by 1080, 8 bit. So if you wanna record in 4K 60 frames per second, you have that option. If you wanna record past 60 frames per second, you're gonna to have to take it down to 1920 by 1080. And another way to be able to tell if your settings that you're currently on is eligible for variable frame rate is when you're scrolling through your settings, it will say variable frame rate or VVR in short on the left-hand side in all of your settings while you're scrolling through your uh, settings from 4K to C4K. Um, all the way down to 1920 by 1920 by 1080. So again, um, there's multiple ways to be able to tell if you're able to do variable frame rate or not, but the quickest way is obviously if you're scrolling through your menu um, to look on the side and see if it says VVR available. And then from there you go to the settings that I showed you and set your variable frame rate that it allows you to do for those specific settings. Again, 4K, you're only gonna be able to go up to 60 frames per setting. For 1920 by 1080, that's where you have the eligibility to be able to go from uh, tw two frames per second all the way up to 180 frames per second. So we'll go ahead and go back and turn that off. And let's go back and put this back on the 4K setting. And then we're gonna go down to continuous autofocus. I keep this off. Photo style, obviously I use Vlog L. Filter settings I have off. Metering mode I keep in the middle. Eye resolution I have on off. ISO sensitivity I have the ISO auto lower limit setting on 400 and the upper limit setting is on 3200. Shading comp I have on off. Diffraction composition I have on off. Stabilizer, uh, basically if I'm doing handheld, I will keep that on the handheld option. If I wanted to have uh, say a music video where I want um, a lot of shakiness and movement, I'm gonna turn that on off so it doesn't have the stabilizer mode on it. And that's for if you want like an action shot where you want that real gritty gutter kind of feeling um, and you don't want the stabilizer to be doing its job, you would turn that on off. But most of the time I will have it on the stabilizer mode. Uh, E-stabilization video I have on off, IS lock video I have on off, anamorphic video I have on off. Uh, X telecomp I have on off, digital zoom off, uh, timestamp recording off, mic level display I have on off, mic level adjustment I have on 0 dB, mic level limiter on, wind noise cancellation is on standard, the sound output is on real time, uh, color bars I keep on the default setting, go down to here. For the exposure, I keep on one third for the extended ISO I have on off, exposure comp off, autofocus AE lock, AE and I keep it on AE lock, shutter autofocus on, half press release off, quick autofocus on, eye sensor AF off, pinpoint autofocus setting mid, and pinpoint autofocus display PIP, autofocus assist lamp I have on on, focus release priority I have the AFS and slash AFF on focus and the AFC on balance, focus switching for vertical and horizontal I have on off, focus switching for vertical horizontal I have on off, loop movement focus frame off, autofocus area display on, autofocus plus manual focus on. For the manual focus assist, I have it on this setting right here. For manual focus assist display, I keep on full, white balance ISO and exposure button after pressing. And basically a lot of these settings are just going to be um, for your personal preference. Mainly the uh, main things that you need to worry about is the record settings, what, how you're recording it, whether it be MP4 or MOV. And then, like I said, the 4K settings, um, how to be able to do slow motion. Obviously down here, I have the Vlog View Assist 
Like I said, that's vlog underscore 709. And then the LUT monitor display I have on on. The live view mode, I keep on 30 frames per second. For the monitor display, I keep everything on the uh, settings that it's already had. I don't turn the brightness up or the contrast. I don't turn any of that up. I keep it all on zero. Monitor lumens, I keep on the third option. For the eye sensor, the sensitivity is on high and the monitor switch is on monitor. You can do live view monitor auto or live view or just monitor. I keep it on monitor. The system frequency I have on 59.94 Hertz. And I don't do any photos on the GH5 or the GH4. This is only for music videos or for video in general, personally, that I use. I do know some people that take photos on the GH5. However, I don't take photos on the GH5. I actually have a Canon 1D for that. So I'm not going to get into the photo settings on the GH5 because I don't use the GH5 or GH4 for photo settings. So these are going to be all the settings that I use for my music videos and for my videos in general with the GH5. I highly recommend Vlog for your music videos. And I'm actually gonna put out a video going into more in depth on why Vlog L is actually the best uh, profile to use when you're shooting music videos compared to Cine D and all the other options that the GH5 and GH4 camera has been having for the last couple of years. And guys, that's gonna be my settings for the GH5 when it comes to music videos and videos in general. Like I said, I will have a video put out later on that will be going more in depth on why I use Vlog L and when you should use Vlog L and when sometimes it's just quicker and more efficient to use a different profile setting such as Cine D, or uh, different other settings with the GH5 when it comes to profile settings. I appreciate you all checking out this video. Be sure to like this video, be sure to comment, be sure to share this video, as well as subscribe to my YouTube channel. I appreciate everybody checking out this video. I'll check in with y'all later.